In this math cast, we're to find the two unit directional vectors of the line P. And here is the line P given in parametric form. Now we remember that a line in parametric form is determined by a point and a parallel directional vector. And its formula is this, and where we have coordinates of the point and the components of the parallel directional vector. So the first thing we're going to do is to organize this in this form. So we would have P equals, here we have X equals, the constant is minus 3 plus, the coefficient of T is 1, then Y equals, the constant is already up front, but the coefficient of T we're going to pull out in front of T, so it's minus 1 half times T. And then z is equal to, there's no constant, so we'll write 0, plus 3t. And then we can easily see that the point is minus 3, 2, 0. And the parallel directional vector is 1 minus 1 half, 3. So let's write those down. So we have the point t equals minus 3, 2, 0. And the parallel directional vector is RP equal to 1 minus 1 half and 3. So let's draw this. Now we can actually draw this line because we have a point and a parallel directional vector. So let's find the point. Minus 3 on the X, 2 on the Y, 0 on Z. So there's T. And then our RP ends at 1 minus one half and then three, so way up here. So this is our parallel directional vector. And this is actually not part of the problem that we're drawing this, but it's easier to see. So this is our P. And so our standard method is to draw a line directly on top of a, the vector and then carry it over to T. So there is our line P. And what we're looking for, actually, is on this directional vector to find unit directional vectors. See, this one is too long. We want the one that hits the point on the sphere of radius 1. So, for example, we would be going up to about right about there. That's one of the unit vectors going right here. So we'll write R, U, 1. And the other one would be if we continued this vector going down doesn't matter where we stop. The other vector would be coming down on the unit sphere, like that somewhere. And so that would be R unit 2. So we're looking for the components of these two vectors, two unit directional vectors. So this vector is too long, but if we divide it by its intensity, we will get the first one. So R unit 1 is equal to RP divided by its intensity. Each component gets divided by this number. And R unit 2, can we think of an easy way to calculate R U 2? Well, it is just simply minus R U 1. So, first thing we need to do is find the intensity of RP. So, RP intensity is equal to the square root of 1 squared plus minus 1 half squared. Usually we don't write the minuses in there because they're getting squared, plus 3 squared. And we'll get out our calculator, and we will do 1 squared plus 0.5 plus minus squared. Notice that it squares the whole thing. Plus 3 squared equals, and then we'll take the square root of that, which is 3.2 approximately. So we will write here approximately 3.20. And so now we need to divide each component of that. So R U 1 equals 1 divided by 3.2 minus 0 0.5 divided by 3.2 and 3 divided by 3.2. Let's see what that is with our calculator. So we'll put this in our memory. 
And so now we have 1 divided by memory recall equals 0 0.31, so 0 0.31. And then 0 0.5 plus minus divided by memory recall equals minus 0 0.16, minus 0 0.16. And 3 divided by memory recall equals 0 0.94, 0 0.94. And as we said, RU2 is simply minus 0 0.31 plus 0 0.16 and minus 0 0.94. And these are the answers to the problem. Let's see this with our dynamic software. It's interesting that in order to draw the line in this particular piece of dynamic 3D software, I actually had to find a point and a directional vector. So here's the point, minus 3, 2, 0. Here is the directional vector. And then I could define the line, P. And now, like I said, we're looking for the vector along here. That's 1 and the vector down here. So let's see if we can find that. That's RU1. And here comes RU2. And just so you can see it, we're going to put a sphere around it of radius 1. Notice that everything became dotted inside there, right to the things. Now we're going to rotate it so we can see it better. So we're going to rotate so that we can see that the ends of those two vectors are on the edge of the sphere of radius 1, which means that their length is 1, and so they are unit vectors. RU1 and RU2.